Um, first of all, I thank the organizers to invite me for this very nice conference. In this few days, I learned a lot and met uh, many people. So it was uh, overall a very nice learning experience. So today I'll be talking about precision quantum sensing with thermal and cold Rydberg atoms. So I would like to um, share with you our exciting results in our lab on cold Rydberg atoms. So this is the outline of my talk. So first I'll give an introduction to quantum technologies with ultra cold Rydberg atoms. Then I'll talk about uh, our measurements of transition frequency of very highly excited Rydberg uh, states. And then I'll uh, share with you our um, recent results on Doppler enhanced quantum magnetometry with Rydberg atoms. And then I'll uh, talk about our observation of uh, Rydberg excitation in cold atoms and our very, very recent uh, observation of effect of interatomic interaction in cold Rydberg atoms. And finally, I'll uh, give you a future perspective of our um, experiments, uh, which we have planned on quantum network with freezer arrays of single Rydberg atoms. So quantum technology is the acquisition, storage, transmission and processing of information using quantum sensors, processors and transmitters. Now quantum technologies have uh, four different verticals, uh, quantum computation, quantum sensing and metrology, quantum simulation and quantum communication. And also there is quantum materials. So first I'll give you a brief introduction about quantum technologies with cold Rydberg atoms. So Rydberg atoms are giant super atoms. These are the giants of the atomic world, but the uh, electron is excited to very, very high, uh, highly excited state with very high principal quantum number. So uh, they are very large atoms uh, with sizes almost of the size of the human hair, which is like uh, really uh, uh, in the mesoscopic regime. The Rydberg atoms uh, was uh, first discovered by Johannes Rydberg way back in 1888. So he found an empirical formula linking the various wavelengths of the spectral lines observed in alkali atoms. And uh, this played a very important role in the birth of quantum mechanics. So Rydberg atoms, as I said, uh, it's a giant atom and it has many uh, exotic properties. Uh, for example, it has very large size, uh, which I mentioned, uh, which goes as uh, n, n squared, where n is the principal quantum number. So these are giant atoms and hence ideal for exploring mesoscopic quantum regime. And uh, the radiative lifetime of the Rydberg atoms goes as n cube. So it has a long coherence time, uh, which is very important for quantum technology applications. And the polarizability goes as n to the power seven, uh, which has a very large dependence on the principal quantum number. And hence, this makes Rydberg atoms extremely sensitive to small DC or AC electric fields, and hence a very promising platform for quantum sensing and metrology. And uh, then also uh, the Rydberg atoms have very large dipole-dipole interaction, which goes as n to the power four and Van der Waals interaction, which goes, to the power, goes as n to the power 11. So these uh, very large, very strong interaction between Rydberg atoms makes it uh, you know, um, very promising for a variety of uh, quantum technology applications. For example, we can create quantum entanglement via Rydberg blockade effect, which can lead to fast quantum gates for quantum computation. We can do quantum simulation of condensed Snyder systems and also um, a quantum communication can be done using Rydberg atoms as a very deterministic single photon source. So um, quantum processors with cold atoms are very, uh, a very versatile system because it's highly coherent system because of the ultra cold temperatures which are uh, accessible in, with cold atoms. And it has high degree of controllability with very fast time scales. And uh, it has strong coupling to light. And also there is a complete control of the interatomic interaction. And uh, the temperature, the dimension, the atomic spin states can be completely controlled. So as you can see that it's a highly controllable system. So uh, the very um, 
the phenomena which is at the heart of uh, um, you know making a red book atoms so promising for quantum computation is something called red book blockade so suppose you have two atoms very far apart they are not interacting but when they are coming close together there's uh, because of the large interaction between red book atoms for example the van der waals interaction there's the energy uh, the shift in the energy level so uh, the laser, uh, the laser which excites one of the atom to the Rydberg state, because of the energy level shift, cannot excite the other atom to the Rydberg state, and vice versa. So you can see there is a correlation which is formed, and this correlation can give rise to entangled state between two Rydberg atoms. So uh, quantum entanglement is at the center stage, which is which is evident from the fact that the Nobel Prize in, uh, in Physics uh, for 2022 was awarded jointly to Alain Aspe, John F. Clauser, Anton, Anton Zeilinger for experiments with entangled photons, establishing the violation of Bell inequalities, pioneering quantum information science. So this is a picture of our red book experiment where you can see this blue laser, which is actually the laser we use for exciting uh, to the red book states. Uh, so we have uh, five PhD students who are working in the experiment. Um, so Shilpa is going to uh, submit in the end of this year. And Shobhan and Yashika, they're around in this conference. And uh, Shornabho and Ashura, they are also working on uh, quantum sensing uh, with Thuridberg atoms. Uh, and we have theory collaborators, so Shobhan Datta. Uh, he is also in the audience today. Uh, so this is our um, setup for uh, the uh, Rydberg experiment in thermal atoms. So we detect the Rydberg states using Rydberg electromagnetically induced transparency. So uh, the phenomena of EIT, which is a very interesting quantum optics phenomena, it has been explained very nicely in the earlier talks. But just for completeness, I'll uh, give you a brief um, a definition. Uh, so the electromagnetically induced transparency happens in generally three level systems, uh, and of course, higher level as well. Uh, so you have a, uh, you can have three level systems like a ladder system, which we are using, or you can have a lambda type of system, or you can have a V type of system where uh, you have two transitions and the destructive quantum interference between the transition probabilities of these two transition can give rise to complete cancellation of absorption. Uh, for example, if you have just one transition, you will see what is the dotted line, which is the normal absorption. But if you have also the coupling beam, uh, coupling laser, then because of this destructive quantum interference, you have a complete cancellation of absorption and you get a transparent medium, which is the electromagnetically induced transparency. Uh, so this is uh, these transitions, uh, the two to three and then three to four, uh, sorry. Um, and from the intermediate state to the Rydberg state. So if you take a, a difference of this uh, absorption profile and uh, the other uh, profile with the uh, transparency, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, you can have, you know, uh, different multiple parts with different transition probabilities. So if you, you know, uh, solve the optical block equation, then you will uh, find what is called the susceptibility of, of the probe, uh, probe absorption, which gives rise to the probe absorption. And then you will find that at, at a certain, uh, you know, um, if certain conditions are matched, which is the two photon resonant condition for this, then you will see that there is a complete cancellation of the absorption. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you can have, you know, you can think of several pathways. So you can have this uh, pathway from this, uh, from the ground state to the excited state, or you can have another pathway, for example, from here to here, and then again uh, to this, and then you can come back uh, here to the state. So there are two different pathways. Uh, so here we can, uh, we see that there's a, a Rydberg EIT signal, which gives the, um, uh, the evidence for excitation to the Rydberg state. Uh, so here we, uh, uh, so the next, what, uh, as we had seen that uh, 
the more higher the principal quantum number, the Rydberg, uh, the properties of the Rydberg atoms becomes more and more uh, interesting because uh, all the properties, they scale up as the principal quantum number. Now, uh, we wanted to go to as high as possible to the excited uh, Rydberg state. Uh, so, but uh, we wanted to measure the trans uh, transition frequencies to go to this highly excited Rydberg state. Now, uh, before I go into our next measurements, I would like to you know, motivate our uh, measurements uh, by uh, uh, this uh, slide. So, uh, as, uh, so when I was doing my postdoc in Paris, so I happened to uh, um, hear a lecture by Theodor Hansch. And uh, he said when he was here, he had gone for a postdoc to uh, the lab of uh, Arthur Shallow, who is the uh, you know, co-inventor of the laser. So the one very useful piece of advice with uh, which Arthur Shallow had given to Hansch is that always measure frequencies. And I think that uh, this profound advice had led uh, Theodor Hansch to uh, invent the, uh, the frequency com, which led to his Nobel Prize in 2005. So, uh, you know, keeping in mind this profound advice, uh, we uh, measured the transition frequencies very accurate, accurately to very highly excited Rydberg states uh, from n equal to 45 to all the way to very highly excited Rydberg states to n equal to 125. So here we could uh, have the accuracy of the transition frequency measurement. Uh, most of them were like, um, uh, you know, the accuracy was like one megahertz. And uh, so we used the Rydberg EIT to measure this transition frequencies. And uh, so here you can see, we can also uh, accurately measure the uh, fine structure splitting between the Rydberg states. And uh, here you can see, uh, these are actually the data points and they're getting very close together as you're going to higher and higher principal quantum number. And uh, while fitting with the theoretical predictions, we could uh, not only get the transition frequencies, but also very precise measurements of the quantum defects, values of the quantum defects, as well as the ionization frequency from the intermediate uh, level. Uh, and uh, so this was published uh, last year. So next, what we did uh, is to do quantum uh, sensing using magnetometry with uh, uh, Rydberg atoms. So we placed this uh, Rydberg atoms in a, in a magnetic field. And uh, so here, so during the earlier measurement of the transition frequencies, we found that uh, there was a signal which we uh, could not uh, explain and we uh, wanted to pursue it and uh, which happened to be a signal which was coming from uh, the, the coupling laser, which is the excitation laser to the Rydberg state. So uh, generally we use it in a counter propagation, a counter propagating configuration, the probe and the coupling laser, so as to minimize the effect of the Doppler shift as much as possible, though it's not possible to completely cancel because of the Doppler mismatch, since the wavelength 780 and 480 nanometer are uh, very, very much different. But uh, we also saw that uh, we could see a signal also from a counter propagating uh, configuration of the coupling laser. Uh, so here you can see the very uh, narrow signal of the Rydberg EIT uh, due to the counter propagating configuration, but we also see a broad signal, EIT signal, because of the co-propagating configuration. And uh, there was a theoretical modeling, which was uh, done by Shobhan Datta, and it actually exactly matches with the experiment. Now, uh, the striking thing which we saw that uh, this is the Zeeman splitting because of the counter propagating configuration, which is the usual configuration for the Rydberg EIT. But we saw that uh, the Zeeman splitting for the co propagating configuration is much larger as compared to the counter propagating configuration. So, this is uh, the probe and the coupling beam in the uh, linear linear configuration, and this is for the circular configuration. Uh, so for the circular configuration, we see a shift uh, rather than a splitting. So this was um, also done uh, uh, compared with the theoretical simulation. And we see uh, excellent agreement with the, of our experimental measurements with the theoretical simulations. Uh, Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, see this, um, uh, I mean, they were not normalized. Uh, I mean, these were like, uh, you know, done together, but you know, these two measurements were taken at, uh, you know, different times. So we just wanted to highlight the splitting. Uh, so, uh, I mean, in, uh, in principle, I mean, uh, if we normalize, they should exactly match even the quantitatively the height to the theoretical simulations. Uh, so this is uh, the theoretical simulation, which was done using uh, the Born Markov approximation uh, in the Lindbart master equation. And so with this equation, we could uh, get the results of the theor theoretical simulation. So here you could see that at higher fields, we could get an order of magnitude larger Zeeman splitting as compared to uh, for the co-propagating configuration as compared to the counter-propagating configuration. And uh, so this is uh, like uh, a significant improvement in, in the, you know, sensitivity to magnetic field. Uh, so, and it, it's promising for quantum sensing using um, uh, magnetometry with Rydberg atoms. So we are actually in preparing the manuscript, which we'll be submitting hopefully next week. So actually all the Seaman splitting are contributing. Uh, together, so you can see in the uh, here. Uh, so it's it's actually the combination of uh, you know Zeeman shifts in all the levels. So mostly the Zeeman shifts in the Rydberg levels are contributing. So in the uh, in the Rydberg levels, uh, so even a small magnetic field is enough to actually decouple the nuclear spin uh, from the uh, the electronic orbital uh, spin. So it, it's actually in the Paschen back regime. So we are we have to treat M I and M J separately for the Rydberg states. So actually, it's, there's a contribution from uh, you know both the intermediate state Zeeman splitting as well as the Rydberg state Zeeman splitting. Uh, yeah, so uh, in Rydberg state, I mean, uh, the sensitivity which we find is, you know, much more than a, you know, normal uh, uh, atoms. And this is just a very lower principal quantum number. So uh, we assume that when we go to very high principal quantum number, the sensitivity will increase further. And also we can take, you know, circular uh, Rydberg orbits, which are much more sensitive to magnetic fields. So, uh, so this is like a proof of principle, but we assume, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it's uh, the, uh, you know, the, in the Rydberg, it's there are, you know, a lot of unknown uh, things. I mean, all the, uh, you know, um, uh, dipole matrix elements, I mean, they are not uh, completely known. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of um, opportunities for experiments to, you know, get, uh, give input to the theoretical calculation so that, you know, all the dipole matrix elements and also the Zeeman splitting are known uh, very accurately. So it's not like uh, completely known as uh, compared to the, you know, the first excited state, the emancipating in the first excited state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, Rydberg atoms, I mean, even uh, I'll come to in the later part of the talk, but, uh, you know, a single Rydberg atoms is, uh, is having, uh, you know, a much more magnet, uh, sensitivity to magnetic field as compared to any normal atom in the ground state. So it has actually the magnetic field sensitivity, which is actually um, more than the state of the art, which is available. So this is a proof of the principle, but finally our aim is to do, uh, you know, uh, quantum sensing using single Rydberg atoms. So there we hope to, you know, go to the state of the art level for the magnetic field sensitivity. Uh, so here you can see a very nice agreement of our experimental measurements with the theoretical simulations. So uh, next I go to uh, our cold atom experiment. So we have a cold atom setup we, where we have observed the uh, Rydberg excitation. So here is the picture of our cold atom setup. So we have, uh, uh, here is the vacuum chamber where we uh, realize our uh, cold atoms using magnet optical trap. And we have two complementary detection system. One is of course the CCD EM CCD camera. 
And also there is another detection system, which is a, a using an APD based system, which is a single photon count counting detector module where we can in principle detect a few photons. That means we can detect the uh, signal from a single atom. So uh, this uh, setup we have also, it, it is uh, capable of doing a second order intensity correlation, uh, measure the second in, uh, order intensity correlation function for the fluorescence coming uh, from the Rydberg, cold Rydberg atoms. Uh, so here is the setup, uh, a schematic for the experimental setup for realizing the cold Rydberg atoms. Uh, so we have the cooling beams, which is actually uh, acting as the you know, probe beam for exciting uh, to the first intermediate state. And then we have the uh, Rydberg laser, which is aligned through the cold atom. And uh, we um, detect the signal using the avalanche photodiode. So here is actually the signal from the cold atoms, uh, cold uh, Rydberg atoms. So this is the Ortler town splitting, which we observe in the cold Rydberg atoms. And uh, it's uh, as you see that uh, as we change, increase the detuning of uh, the cooling beams, which acts as the uh, probe laser or the exciting to the first um, intermediate state. So here you can see as we are changing the detuning, the outlet down split, uh, the peaks of the outlet down splitting is, uh, uh, you know, splitting further, which is the evidence that it's uh, actually a outlet down splitting uh, in cold Rydberg atoms. So this is the, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so actually when we are in cold atoms, so the cooling beam intensity is much larger than the Rydberg laser intensity. So now the role is reversed. So now uh, the, uh, the high intensity cooling laser is actually giving rise to the AC stark uh, shift and the, you know, outlet town splitting of this, uh, outlet town splitting in this uh, cold atoms. And, and Uh, the cooling beam, which now acts as uh, the stronger beam, which gives rise to this optret down splitting. So we can uh, very accurately measure the fraction of Rydberg excitation, and we could uh, get a Rydberg excitation fraction of Rydberg excitation as high as more than uh, you know 0.8, uh, almost close to one. So uh, we could see very interesting effect of as we go to higher and higher uh, Rydberg state. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention. So this is that principal quantum number 35, and this is principal quantum number 55. So you already see a broadening effect because of the dephasing effect of the interatomic interaction between cold Rydberg atoms. So here, uh, so this is, uh, so we uh, plan to go to even higher and higher uh, excited Rydberg states so that we can, uh, you know, see more broadening effect uh, because of the Rydberg interaction. And finally, uh, so here is the uh, okay detection setup. Uh, I go to yeah. So finally, we uh, would like to look at the scaling behavior as uh, with respect to the principal quantum number. So we um, so there is a theoretical prediction that uh, the uh, so there is a scaling behavior with of the fraction of Rydberg excitation uh, with respect to the principal quantum number. So we hope to, you know, reach this, uh, uh, measure the scaling behavior and the critical exponent as we look at the uh, broadening because of the Rydberg interaction with, at higher and higher uh, excited state. So um, since we want to have, a, a, you know, very high stability and a long-term stability of this Rydberg excitation, we would like to uh, uh, lock these two lasers, which are giving rise to this Rydberg excitation, to a, a to a transfer cavity. So we are in the process of locking these two exciting lasers to a transfer cavity. So here is the detailed schematic diagram. Uh, where we want to, uh, our aim is to uh, have a very long-term, uh, very good long-term stability of this exciting lasers, both the 780 and the 480, uh, to by locking to this uh, transfer cavity, which we already have uh, procured from stable laser systems in uh, from Colorado Boulder, and uh, so this is our next step in our experiment. Uh, so. Um, then another um, uh, step in our experiment, uh, which we are going to do after this measurement, 
is to actually trap this cold um, atoms in a, in, in a 1D dipole trap, in a, a single dipole trap, and um, uh, you know, trap it in a 1D configuration. So there has been a prediction. So we are actually collaborating with Rajesh Nath in IISCR Pune. So uh, there's a th theoretical prediction that because of the Rydberg blockade effect, uh, there could be uh, observation of crystallization effect in this 1D configuration with cold Rydberg atoms. So we hope to observe this uh, in our experiment where we have, uh, we'll trap this cold Rydberg atoms in this uh, optical di dipole trap and uh, we can uh, change, uh, you know, we can go to higher, uh, very highly excited Rydberg state to have a very um, prominent Rydberg blockade effect so that we can see this effect of crystallization. Uh, so after this, uh, we are going to have uh, the, uh, we, we are going to trap an uh, individual atom in an optical tweezer. So we already in our uh, cold atom setup, we have uh, uh, this, we have the design such that we can have uh, individual uh, atom trapped in an optical tweezer. So we have the lens inside the vacuum chamber, so which makes sure that the focal spot of the optical tweezer is so small that it can, um, it can trap zero or one atom in the, in the optical tweezer uh, uh, due to coalitional blockade. And uh, so this is our optical setup, uh, optical setup, which is already in place for uh, creating the optical tweezer for single atom trapping. So the single atom trapping uh, for Rydberg excitation, it has uh, several advantage. Uh, so it allows for controlled engineering of the quantum state. And uh, it's for a single quantum system, uh, it, is, uh, uh, to it is necessary to trap a single quantum system to encode and process information at the quantum level. And uh, it's also promising to explore quantum physics of particles at the microscopic level. So uh, the single quantum, uh, exploring single quantum system is, uh, is very promising, which was evident from the fact that the Nobel Prize in 2012 was awarded jointly to Serge Harosh and David Weinland for groundbreaking experimental methods that enable measuring and manipulation of individual quantum systems. So um, the idea is to have uh, an area of optical tweezer where individual atoms are trapped in each of the optical tweezer. And then we uh, have an atom by atom assembly and create entanglement between the Rydberg atoms. Uh, so after we have excitation to the Rydberg states, we create entanglement between the Rydberg atoms and we can create a network of fast quantum gates using entanglement between individual Rydberg atoms. So as we all know that in a microscopic regime, it uh, follows the single particle physics. And in the macroscopic uh, regime, uh, it generally follows the many body physics. But what is very interesting is the intermediate regime, which is the mesoscopic regime. So uh, this is, it will be very interesting to explore this regime. So for this, uh, we would do, as I said, we'll do an atom by atom assembly to go from a microscopic regime to a mesoscopic regime uh, to explore the scalability uh, to a large scale of 1D or a 2D array of individual Rydberg atoms. So as I said, uh, Rydberg atoms in an, uh, in an array of optical tweezers is a very versatile system. You can not only do quantum networking, quantum computation, but you can also explore many body physics and uh, you know, quantum magnetism uh, of uh, using Rydberg atoms in individual area, individual uh, array of optical tweezers. So where if we have uh, individual Rydberg atoms trapped in a triangular array or a square array of uh, optical tweezers, we can uh, probe quantum magnetism or uh, antiferromagnetic ordering using such uh, um, square or triangular array of uh, Rydberg atoms. So another idea which uh, I want to uh, implement in our experiment is to uh, use the very um, long range interaction in Rydberg atoms and combine it with disordered potential. And uh, this has never been explored in any experiment. And uh, probably we can uh, look for new quantum phases arising due to the interplay of this long range Rydberg interaction with the disordered potential. And we can probably see uh, novel quantum phases in this disordered interacting system. 
So also, uh, since I had mentioned, uh, Rydberg atoms has a very large polarizability, which goes as n to the power seven. So it's extremely sensitive to small DC or electric fields, and hence a very promising platform for quantum sensing and metrology. So we would like to, uh, as I mentioned before, we would like to do quantum sensing with individual Rydberg atoms, and probably we will be able to beat the standard quantum limit via using quantum tricks such as three states, and uh, probably reach the Heisenberg limit, which is the holy grail of quantum measurements. So with this, I come to the end of my talk. So I give summarize uh, the results which I have discussed. So I have given an introduction to quantum technology with the uh, cold Rydberg atoms. I have uh, described our transition frequency measurements uh, of very highly excited Rydberg state. And I have discussed about uh, our uh, experiment on quantum magnetometry with thermal Rydberg atoms and uh, our observation of uh, uh, Rydberg excitation in cold atoms, and also the effect of uh, interatomic Rydberg interaction uh, in uh, cold Rydberg atoms. And I have discussed about the future perspective on quantum information and uh, quantum simulation uh, with cold Rydberg atoms. Thanks for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Roy. Uh, the floor is open for please go ahead. Last part, what's the nature of interaction between two neighboring Rydberg atoms in the array? What kind of, is it columbic, is it exchange? Is so it's, uh, uh, it's two kind of interaction. It's a uh, van der Waals or dipole-dipole interaction, uh, depending on, you know, how uh, far, uh, I mean, what is the range of interaction of this, uh, you know, two Rydberg atoms. So, you know, mostly at a very large interatomic distance, it's the uh, van der Waals, which is dominating, and at very close distance, it's the dipole-dipole interaction, which is dominating. But then your, your second or, or the future uh, projects that you are saying that some of the physical phenomena, particularly disorder effects, et cetera, that you would like to look at, they deal with a certain type of interaction between atoms. Don't you, do you think those guys will, can be reproduced here? Uh, so I have myself worked with BEC in disordered system where we have uh, very precisely measured the mobility edge between the you know, diffusive and the, the Anderson localized phase. And uh, I find that this is still a very open, uh, you know, open uh, area where a lot of things has to be still understood in the disordered interacting system. So since, uh, you know, BC, um, uh, you know, it has the, uh, it has the advantage, you know, cold atoms that we can completely shut off the interaction, we can put it to zero. Most of the, uh, most of the experiments have been performed in non-interacting system. But when we introduce the interaction, the system becomes much more richer. And we, there are many, many avenues which are yet to be explored. For example, there is a recent theoretical prediction. I think it came from uh, Harvard University from the group of Subit Sachdev that uh, there are many, you know, uh, new, very interesting phases where we can, uh, uh, you can observe using, a, you know, Rydberg long range uh, interaction of the Rydberg system in a, you know, in a disordered system or, or a Kagom lattice. So these are like really very, very open field where a lot of things are remaining to be understood and explored. Yeah, we can tune the interaction. Uh, so we can... Uh, uh, the nature of interaction between atoms is different from what we find in standard solid or the low energy solids. Yes, atoms. but we can actually... The same physics can be reproduced. Yeah, we can do a quantum simulation. So actually that's why, uh, you know, uh, quantum gases or cold atoms are an excellent quantum simulator because we can actually do a... Uh, so BC in an optical lattice or, you know, long range Rydberg um, interaction of Rydberg atoms in, you know, an array of optical tweezer, they can, you know, uh, do a, uh, and they are like analogous to uh, electrons in a solid state system. So the, you know, the physics of electrons in a solid state system can be very um, faithfully reproduced in, uh, you know, such a system with uh, Rydberg atoms in optical lattices or disordered potential or BC in uh, optical lattices and disordered potentials. Any other questions?
so this um, this enhancement of this um, the Zeeman splitting yeah. it actually comes from the you know Doppler broadening effect. Yeah, but the, if that is the reason, then the point is that for any precision measurement, what matters is how well you can split the line. Meaning, if you have a broad line and the splitting is broad, that is equivalent to something where the splitting is small and the line width is narrow. So there, I don't see. I mean, will you understand the point? <coughs> Like unless you, so it all will depend on how precisely you measure the center of those transition. And in these two cases, one line is much broader. So uh, can you explain? Unless if, not, if it is not clear, I can. No, 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 uh, <clears throat> uh, just one second. Um, okay, so here, um, what is happening is that because of the Doppler broadening effect, we are getting larger splitting, uh, Zeeman. So uh, in such situations where, you know, you cannot get, um, you know, detect, you resolve the splitting, Zeeman splitting, uh, you know, in a system, but because of, uh, you know, this enhancement, which is because of the Doppler effect, you can actually do a good resolution of this. Uh, no, that, that argument would be true if yeah. when your splitting is large, but the line width remains the same, then I would buy your argument. But if your line width is broadening and the splitting is also large, you are not gaining anything in the resolving power. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, but you know, there is, there could be, you know, some uh, situations, for example, here at very low field, you cannot just, uh, cannot at all resolve uh, these peaks, but uh, you know. So is there a case in this whole pattern where at let's say 2.66, you were not able to resolve it and at that one you could resolve it? Yeah, I mean, at very low fields, we, we could uh, resolve uh, very well uh, the one uh, for the co-propagating configuration, but uh, at very low field, there was one point where we could not see any, you know, resolution of the peaks in the counter-propagating configuration. Uh -huh. So in those situations, this would be very yeah. useful that you yeah. can really okay. measure the field yeah. with okay. the yeah. resolution. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I have one. So what is the field sensitivity that you project you can reach? Uh, yeah, so we are actually still working on it. You would like to give the best numbers and you write a paper. So we are actually, you know, analyzing all our data to get uh, the correct value of the sensitivity. So still, uh, you know, we have to arrive at that number. You know, we are still doing the you know, analysis of all the data to arrive at that number. But uh, uh, you, it's, it's mostly a proof of principle experiment. So it's not that at this point we are want to compete with the you know, best sensitivity, uh, the state of the art. Uh, but as I was saying that, uh, you know, this is a, a proof of the principal experiment and which we have seen uh, something which uh, other experiments have not seen. Uh, so this is, uh, but of course, if you want to really compete with the best in the world, the best system will be like a single Rydberg atoms uh, a circ use with the, you know, circular excited uh, Rydberg state, uh, which will of course give the best sensitivity. But this one is like, uh, you know, gives a, a sort of a proof proof of principle uh, measurement where we are showing that even a Doppler, which generally, uh, you know, in many experiments, uh, people think that Doppler effect is something you want to get rid of to go to, you know, more precise measurements. But here it was like counterintuitive. We are actually using the Doppler effect to give an uh, to enhance the Zeeman splitting or the sensitivity to magnetic field. So, uh, of course, to uh, compare with the best sensitivity, we have to go to single Rydberg atoms. Uh, thank you again. Uh, so we'll break uh, for tea and we reassemble at uh, 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you.